Now I request Alphonse to present the paper on assessment of infection prevention and control practices in health facilities in Cameroon using the co infection prevention and control assessment framework. Thank you very much, and thank you for this opportunity to present uh, this work. So uh, I'm called Alphonse Achu, I'm Cameroonian, and uh, I'm a field epidemiologist working in the Ministry of Public Health. Um, and I also happen to work, I uh, happen also to be a PhD candidate in public health. And this is part of my uh, thesis work that I'm sharing with you today. So we are going to be seeing what happened or the, the results of the assessment of infection prevention and control in health facilities in Cameroon. We use the WHO uh, IPC assessment framework. So we are going to follow this uh, outline, this presentation outline. I'm going to give you a little background on, on the topic, the problem, the method that we use and results and conclude and I'll conclude and give you the next steps of the work. So uh, healthcare associated infections uh, are defined as infections acquired during delivery of care. And they constitute actually a global challenge with developing countries disproportionately affected. Uh, WHO actually reports that uh, up to 7% of patients in developed countries and 10% in developing countries will acquire at least one healthcare associated infection. And so uh, the annual hospital cost for healthcare associated infections in the US is actually estimated at $33 billion per year. This is really huge. And however, in developing countries, we, it is very difficult to estimate this uh, because uh, WHO, a recent WHO report actually states that uh, costs attributable to healthcare certain infections are poorly uh, documented and they vary uh, in developing countries. And so one key thing is that uh, infection prevention and control programs especially in health facilities at the national level, but also at uh, health facilities is vital to limit the spread, the spread of healthcare associated infections. And uh, I want to share with you the, 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 the core components of an infection prevention and control program. Uh, according to WHO, we have eight uh, components at the health facility level. So we have one, the existence of a program. That is, we, we need to have a program we need to have a, a, a documentation that uh, this is a program with an organigram of how the program is supposed to be run. We need to have IPC guidelines. We need to have people who are trained and uh, educated in infection prevention. That is, WHO calls them champions who are supposed to champion the cause of IPC in health facilities. They need to be uh, surveillance of healthcare associated infections. And then they, use, they need to use a multimodal strategy. This strategy is actually a four steps to five step strategy where you need to, first of all, if you want to change behavior, the very first thing you need to do, it doesn't suffice to educate somebody, but you need to, first of all, change the environment. That is, you need to put in place, uh, uh, for, for, for instance, if I take IPC, you need to put in place uh, gels, soap, water po play, uh, points for people to wash hands. You need to improve on that. You need to train the people. You have to do monitoring to ensure that the practice, you need to motivate them so that they can change behavior. That's what WHO calls multimodal strategy. But also you need to do monitoring and audit feedbacks using the, the WHO has actually, they actually developed a tool for this. You also need to evaluate the workload to, to be ensure, to ensure that uh, workers are not overworked at the level of health facilities and also look at staffing and bed occupancy. You need to also look at the material and the equipment in the health facility as a whole. We need, for instance, water access, sanitation and hygiene uh, gadgets to be able to pilot uh, infection prevention and control activities in the health facility. And so, so what is the problem? We know already that healthcare and children infections are a common cause for unintended harm. Patients come to the hospital with different pathologies and at the end of the day, they go back with another. This actually accounts for prolonged stay in the hospital and a waste of resources. Patients end up spending a lot of money in their facilities. When we know that uh, infection control programs are, in, are important, they're vital. This is things, these are things that were taught in the medical school and paramedical schools back in the days. But now we've suddenly forgotten this. And uh, in, in 2018, 
And this, we take note of this, that this was even before the COVID pandemic, um, that WHO released this uh, framework, this infection prevention and control framework to help healthcare facilities improve on infection prevention and control yeah, at the level of healthcare facilities. However, this, uh, are we in Cameroon, we have uh, scarcity of data. I've not even seen a data uh, on this yet in Cameroon. So data IPC status of healthcare facilities in Cameroon are unknown. So, so assessing IPC practices in healthcare facilities will constitute the very first step for continuous quality improvement of IPC practices and promote and promote uh, uh, and promote the use of this tool uh, actually in healthcare facilities in Cameroon. So, and also this will also contribute in improving uh, the patient care. Okay. So this was actually uh, a survey that we started in 2019 and at the end of 2019, uh, basically it was in 2020. And uh, we used uh, uh, this framework to collect data. We actually got uh, the people and when they were trained and briefed on the use of this data and we got uh, administrative authorization uh, because this was part of the routine work in my service. So we got the, the, the minister valid, who validated the service notes and then we went down to the field. So actually uh, we assessed uh, 38 health facilities uh, in uh, five regions of Cameroon's 10 regions, five of Cameroon's 10, 10 regions. As you can see in the, in, in the map, we got to the north representation in the three northern regions. We got the, 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 the north, and then we also got uh, five health facilities at the center and even the south. So these are the five health facilities and all categories of uh, health facilities were represented from our sampling in these uh, regions. We use uh, actually a multi-stage sampling methodology uh, to try to get a representation of the health facilities in Cameroon. And uh, we, you, we keyed in data and analyze it using uh, the, the the social uh, the statistics package for social science SPSS and then we got frequency tables and chi square tests to measure categorical data and so as a result uh, from the 38 health facilities that were sampled 71 percent of them were from the public sector uh, and then 34 of them uh, of these health were actually from the first and second categories. That is, we're talking about reference hospitals, we're talking about regional hospitals. Uh, and then uh, we have a median score uh, of 225.5. That is keep it, putting the, 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 on a range, that is the lowest, the, 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 we had one facility with the lowest score of 113 on a scale of 800. And uh, the, uh, the highest was 530, scale of 800. So that was the range. and. Uh, keeping or classifying these health facilities under uh, basic if we go by the median. And most uh, of these health facilities were either inadequate or basic. They had a basic or inadequate level of infection prevention and control. And so uh, healthcare associated infection surveillance was the weakest component of all the components, of all of the eight components evaluated. That is none of the health facilities had an advanced level of uh, infection prevention according to the doctor. And so we go also by public versus private, and we go by uh, the cat we categorize also by reference, regional, district, and health facilities are the classes of, of uh, health facilities that we, we, we surveyed. And then we go by the IEPC status also, you would see, like I said, that most of them were either inadequate or basic. So what does that mean? If you look at the classification here, on a scale of 800, if you have from 0 to 200, you are classified as inadequate. You have a lot of work to do. From 200 to 400 or 201 to 400 is busy. 401 to 600 is intermediate. And 601 to uh, 800 is advanced, as according to WHO. So we looked at uh, a public at the, uh, the level of IPC. And so none of the health facilities sample had uh, an advanced IPC, like I said. Now we we dare to use chi square to look a little bit to play to look a little bit at uh, association between this categorical data, and uh, it suffices to say that 
there was a significant association between regional location and having a health facility with an intermediate level, which is which was the highest level. This uh, we are not affirmative of uh, affirmative of this. It might be because the sample size was small. We intend to improve on this, add the sample size, and see whether this uh, assertion could be valid. Uh, but it doesn't also rule it out because we also know that there are some regions that are uh, that are more developed than others in Cameroon. So that also can explain this. And so uh, IPC status to conclude is that IPC status is poor in Cameroon generally in Cameroonian health facilities. The use of this tool is not common. None of the health facilities that we sample have ever used this tool before. This was surprising to us too. So this, uh, there is need to advocate for the use of this tool, which is a very important tool, especially in the advent of the COVID pandemic. I know that when Cameroon notified its first pan, uh, case of COVID in March 2020, then the tool that they started using, which was an emergency tool or an adapted tool, was a scorecard. I don't know whether it is used in other countries, but that's what we use in Cameroon. And we use that in Cameroon, and which is a, a, a summarized version, a summarized version of this. But still, we need this IPC to do baseline uh, assessments and even follow-up assessments. And so these are references, and I'm going to tell you the next step in my research work. So we want to, first of all, advocate, and we have been doing that already, advocate for the use, because we've shared these results with uh, the hierarchy. We are advocating for the use of this tool to improve uh, IPC practices in all health facilities in Cameroon, especially given the COVID pandemic. And uh, the next step will be for us to design and implement a continuous uh, quality improvement of IPC in pilot health, health facilities. That's the next step of my work. I'm already working. I've already chosen some, uh, uh, some pilot health facilities from this 38 where I am implementing quality improvement. I'm doing uh, uh, repeated assessments with this tool. I want to see, to see whether what are the challenges and how can we advise the government on how to go about it. And so I'm particularly interested uh, in designing and adapting a healthcare associated infection surveillance in, in these pilot health facilities. So know that this is a challenge in developing countries. We do not even have uh, data. Or, there is a lot of scarcity, there is scarcity of data in developing uh, countries and especially in Cameroon. And so once we develop and this and test it and test, they will develop and test a framework where that we can market or that we can propose to policymakers where they can use to improve, especially this arm that was the weakest in our study. With that, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you for listening. Over. I'm available if there are any clarifications or questions or if there are comments to improve the work. Thank, Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alphonse, for the topic presenter in the medicine uh, theme. Uh, dear participants, please raise question in the Q&A box so that uh, we can answer, uh, we can ask uh, Mr. Alphonse to answer on that. And side by side, we open the poll for uh, Mr. Alphonse to uh, get the scores in the polling session. One question in the chat box. What do you think can be used to improve on the IPC status in terms of materials? Thank you for your for this very important question. I think that in terms of uh, uh, materials, we will only follow the, the WHO guidelines. I think the WHO guidelines are clear. But one thing we discovered, uh, one thing we discovered in uh, our, in, the, in our survey is that this tool was not yet vulgarized. Many people didn't know about it. They, didn't, they had never heard about it. It was their first time of hearing about this tool that could be used to improve infection prevention and, uh, and control. And so for us, the very first thing would be to vulgarize or to sensitize the health facilities on the use of this tool, especially given the, the present context, which is what we are already uh, doing. And then the next thing will be supervisions, on-site supervisions to ensure that people use this. I wouldn't say that uh, the government should... Uh, uh, print this and say no the health facilities have the capacity to just download this print it out and then use it and then train the people to how to and how to, to fill it in the health facilities that we in our continuous uh, quality improvement uh, design we, we 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 have actually we are actually testing 
a met a methodology where there are different steps on how to go about this with the with the, with the use of this material. Um, thank you for answering, uh, Mr. Alphonse. Thank you so much. And you can unshare your screen as well as your video can be disconnected and make yourself as a participant for continue this uh, uh, eight TWCS conference. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. Thank you.